Oh, what's up, Art Disc Golf? You caught me shaving. Believe it or not, I actually grow a little bit of facial hair, just enough to where if I don't shave, it looks really gross. Uh, I'm thinking in like maybe a year or two, probably two years, uh, I'll be able to grow a beard and I'm hoping to come off the off season and just show up at the first event with like a beard and just surprise everybody. So, you know, that would be really cool. But today I'm here to answer some of your guys' questions. I asked you guys, uh, what do you wanna know? And you left a ton of comments. Today I'll probably go through about 10 or 12 different comments uh, and answer them for you guys. If your question doesn't get answered, go check our disc golf because I may, might have come back around and uh, answered your question uh, via text. Uh, so there, there's always that chance. Okay, so let's jump into the questions. The first question is by Motoren. He has 99 points. Whatever that means, I guess it means for upvotes. I don't really know what, how Reddit works. Yeah. Uh, could you do a forehand form video? Yes. Uh, in the coming weeks, since there's not a lot to do, I'm going to go out to a field with no one around, social distancing, and I'm going to record myself doing some forehand videos, but then I'm gonna come back here and break it down. It's gonna be me giving you some tips on how to improve your forehand, but also it's gonna be me breaking down my own forehand and kind of being confused on how it works because when I look at it, it's a little confusing even for me, the person who's throwing it. So stay tuned for that, guys. Okay, Danner C, Dan Irk, also known as Frisbee Toff, sir, asks, whose game do you have a lot of respect for that isn't necessarily a perennial feature card player? Okay, uh, I would say I really like Joe Revere's game. He's more of a local player here in Colorado. I always say that Joe Revere is the best player in Colorado. I'm the best player from Colorado. So Joe absolutely shreds it here. I really like the style of his game. Uh, you can definitely search his name on YouTube and watch him if you guys are interested. Uh, he's a little bit older, but if he was uh, able to tour, I can guarantee you that he would be a feature card player. You'd see his name uh, quite a lot um, in the top 10. So he's he's someone who I have a, a good amount of respect for. Uh, just And also he's someone who kind of helped me see what that uh, more, he kind of helped me see what that elite talent was and helped me kind of push myself towards um, being a professional touring disc golfer. The next question is by Accomplished Anomaly. He asks, what practice basket do you use? How do you generally go about practice putting? Can you do another stance breakdown slash putting tutorial on YouTube? Love you, Eagle. Thanks, man. Uh, so I use the goat basket, the Innova 28 chain disc catcher. Uh, I believe that it's important to have good equipment to put on because good equipment can help you get good confidence. Uh, and how I normally practice putt is I like to start off close and I want to know that I am making putts and not missing them. Uh, usually I like to have a, for me, a 95 to ni probably 99% make uh, percentage. And once I, with how I know I have that is I'm making those putts. If I start stepping back and missing, then I bring it closer until I'm making th those putts. So that's kind of my advice to you. Find a distance where you're making uh, nine out of 10 putts. Uh, if it's 30 feet and you're making nine out of 10 putts, then that's great, you're the best putter ever. But more realistically, you're gonna be about uh, kind of 15 to 20 feet. So stay in that area. And uh, as far as the new tutorial goes, it could happen in the future, but right now I, am, I have some other videos I would like to make first before that. Next question is by Margel2. He asks, how sustainable is the life as a disc golf pro for you and in general? And is there anything you are doing to prepare for an eventual post disc golf player life? And then you, you can read the, the bottom part. I'm not gonna, it'll make the video too long. So 
I'll answer pretty much everything he said in this. Uh, so the first thing that you got to understand with disc golf, it's not a get rich quick scheme. Is there money in it? There is for the people who dedicate themselves and are willing to go above and beyond. So if you look at everyone, they're playing disc golf for the lifestyle because they love it. They get to travel around with their friends, have a unique experience and, you know, not work. And that's amazing. That's like living a dream. So if people can do it, then they should take advantage of it. Um, there are some concerns though, because when you're out on the road for that long, you kind of forget what normal life is. Like my first job, I was a window cleaner and the idea of cleaning windows now is just like crazy to me. Spending eight hours a day just around a house and not being able to move, not be able to have those spikes in emotion, it's, it's crazy. So we can become a little spoiled but also disc golf has taught me so much about life and myself, but that's a whole nother video. But to answer your question, it's not a get rich quick scheme. There is money. And for me personally, I feel like I have, if I can't play disc golf forever, what disc golf has taught me and the opportunity it has brought me, I can go and do pretty much anything I choose to pursue. So that's, that's my answer, yeah. Next question is by Teen Honey. He asks, how do you think this pause in the season will impact future performance? I know many players have a structure in place to ramp up and be ready for the tournament season, but with all the uncertainty about when play will resume, are you finding it hard to know how to proceed? Um, me personally, I, I'm using this as an opportunity to grow as a person. Uh, there's a lot of things that uh, I want to do and I don't normally get a chance to during the disc golf season. So I'm gonna use this opportunity to work out more, to learn about uh, using Adobe products much uh, more effectively. I'm trying to learn Spanish right now. And you know, I'm not gonna be hitting the course very often because I do believe in social distancing, but I will be going out to the field if no one's there practicing my throws, practicing putts. And I believe that this is a great time to see who will uh, be better in the actual season. Whoever takes this quote unquote off season the most serious, I think that's the person who's going to come out uh, firing when the season resumes. Okay, next question is by a name I will not say. Yeah, uh, you, can, you can see why I censored his name, but he asks, Eagle, what do you like to do the day after a big tournament? It really depends. Uh, I'll give you two different scenarios. One scenario is I get finished with a big tournament and then the next weekend is another big tournament. I like to uh, get a good recovery session in. So do a lot of stretching, maybe go on like a, a low impact run just, just to get my uh, body moving to kind of flush out lactic acid and uh, you know just get blood flow going. I also like to focus on my nutrition, make sure that I am replenishing everything that I may have uh, expelled during the weekend. So that's very important. But if there's no tournament after uh, the big tournament that I played this the last weekend, I like to get on a plane and travel home. Yes, that's always the best. Perkle3 writes, do you have a set routine before the tournament to calm your nerves or do you have other practical ways to deal with the pressure? This question, um, the answer to this question varies um, in different circumstances, but generally the way I deal with pressure before tournament starts from the moment I wake up. Uh, I really like to wake up and do a breathing exercise slash meditation just to kind of calm my nerves down and, you know, get into a more uh, relaxed flow state. And then when I get to the chorus, I like to, I like to uh, maybe listen to some music before. Lately, I haven't been listening to music uh, before my round. And I really like to take some time to sit before my round 
and I have, um, I have this contract that I wrote for myself. So I can just look at the contract and it kind of tells me all the things that I need to be aware of when I'm on the course. And most of the time it does work. Uh, there are certain times where things kind of slip through the cracks. And if you guys didn't know, like I am a pretty feisty person some of the time out there. So I'm always doing my best to calm myself down. It's, it's, a, it's a work in progress, but that's kind of the beauty of it. You always got to practice uh, trying to harness your energy to direct it to where it needs to go. That's all, that's, that's the whole point of disc golf. You, you get the energy, you harness it, and then you force it into the Frisbee and then it maybe goes in the basket. And the second part of the question is, what is your favorite movie? This is a tough question. I'll just stay spirited away right now because that's an amazing movie. TV show, I like Skins UK. Book, Chasing Excellence. This is a big part of my uh, set routine. I recommend this book to anybody. You can read the back if you pause the video now. Shout out to Brian Peterson. This book really did change my life. One of the best books I've ever read. Love it. And favorite burger, vegan burger. Uh, Beyond Burger is pretty dang good, but Next Level Burger in Portland, Oregon, their quinoa burger is amazing. It's really great. Next question is by Zeb Jins. He asks, what are your favorite courses and what qualities about them make them your favorite? My top three courses in the world, I'll say top four, maybe top five. I'll just say some courses that I like. Number one is uh, Yarva Disc Golf Park. Number two is both Milo courses. They're two courses, but I kind of count them as one. Uh, I really enjoy the Beast in Nokia, Finland, and then the Kona Peace State course in the Czech Republic or Czechia. So the, the thing that's consistent amongst those courses is that they're not wide open. They're not necessarily big bomber courses. They're not super tight and wooden, but they're just the perfect amount of shot shaping, shot placement, and fairness. That's what I believe is the best. I don't like courses just wide out and open. All you're thinking about is throwing hard, but I also don't like courses with just a wall of trees because, you know, I think there's a certain amount of luck involved with that. So if you mix both elements together, then you got something special. All those courses have both of those elements and they're amazing. Devin H, 1122 writes, what is your favorite vegan meal to make? Looking for new recipes to add to my cookbook. Okay, so I don't have a favorite recipe. I, you know, I've been cooking for longer than I've been playing disc golf. So recipes don't really exist in my mind. I kind of just throw things together. Uh, I think that's kind of the art of it. Uh, so I can't really tell you something in particular, but some dishes that I enjoy or some styles. I really like Thai, Thai food. So I make Pad Thai style dishes, uh, uh, Thai curry style dishes, make burgers, pretty much anything that you would normally eat that's not vegan, I try to make vegan. Yeah, yeah. Okay, this relates to the last question a bit. So I think it's perfect. Hi Eagle. I asked you this at the fan signing in Phoenix, but I was hoping you could go more in depth on your veganism and how it feels to be a vegan athlete. Is it difficult being on the road, finding places to eat, or have you been doing it for so long that it's just second nature for you? What do your touring partners say about it? I've been vegetarian for the last year and a half, so I'm always inspired by athletes that can perform at the highest level and be plant-based. Finally, where have you had the best or most unexpectedly good food while being on the road and what was it? Thanks. Okay, so of course all of you know that I am vegan and I'm not bragging about it. The reason why I'm vegan is because my parents were vegan since I was like four years old, uh, but I was vegan ever since I was like 12 years old but vegetarian slash pescatarian all my life before that. A little bit of chicken, a little bit of turkey when I was super young. But other than that, I haven't really eaten meat all that much. And I don't judge you if you eat meat. I actually am I'm a big fan of Joe Rogan. 
And I'm very curious about like the carnivore diet and seeing like the health benefits. I don't think I would ever do that. Uh, but you know, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to say a certain way is right or wrong because veganism has worked for me so far. I can honestly say I feel a lot of energy. I don't get sick very often. And you know, every time I go to the doctor, they say I'm pretty healthy. So I feel like I'm doing a pretty decent job at it. Um, but it might not work for you. And what he asked me is basically like, do you have issues doing it? And the answer is no, because I've done it for so long. It's basically all that I know. I know if someone else wanted to do it, it would be a little bit more difficult because you know, you, you have those dishes, that food so ingrained into you. So what I do ask you guys to do is just think about what you eat. Like, I don't think I'll ever eat meat, but if I do, I'm gonna be very conscious about it. And I'll probably do like, uh, I imagine game meat or something that I would hunt myself. Cause I really don't believe in just going to the store or a burger joint and getting some random processed meat because I think that's very low quality. Um, but if you want to take it to the next level, know where your food comes from and hunt for it, then I, I'm all for that. I like being a vegan athlete, but I don't judge other people who do things differently. This is just the way I do it and I like it. And the last question is, uh, food that was unexpectedly good uh, my favorite restaurant, that's how I'm just gonna answer the question, my favorite restaurant is Casa de Luz in Austin, Texas. It's amazing, they change their menu every day. It's oil-free, uh, organic, gluten-free, macrobiotic, and the food is just very wholesome and absolutely amazing. And the final question is by 3Dan, and he asks me, can I juggle? And the answer is yes, kind of. I wanna get better. I definitely want to get better, do some tricks, maybe get to four balls. I don't have balls right now. Uh, but it's fun. And I highly recommend uh, you trying to juggle. I'm actually trying to juggle a soccer ball right now. And it's kind of hard, but I'm going to get better. I had a bet with Eric Oakley, but kind of forgot about it. I was like, how many touches you can get? I just want to juggle any way I can. I'm a big fan of practicing your hand-eye, hand-foot coordination. It just, it makes you more coordinated and coordination is great. Coordination's a lot of fun. So guys, that was my R Disc Golf q and I hope you enjoyed it. Check the R Disc Golf. If your question did not get answered, I'm gonna be there answering as many questions as I can get through. So appreciate all of you. And until next time, thanks for watching. Peace.